We're here at the European Broadcasting Union headquarters in Geneva, Switzerland, the home of the Eurovision Song Contest. Dukoscopy TV's History of the Brand explores how the longest running annual international TV song competition came to be. Ruined and war-torn after the end of World War II, Europe searched for ways to return to the unity and greatness of its past. As technology developed, implementing a universal idea seemed to have become simpler and more realistic. In January 1955, Marcel Besançon, director of Swiss television, suggested creating an international song contest. It was based on the San Remo Music Festival, Technically, however, it was still just an experiment as satellite television did not exist at that time and the Eurovision Song Contest comprised a terrestrial microwave network. It started back in 1955, actually, 1955, where we had the technology to, to transmit TV signals to different countries at the same time. Uh, so, so it was was a consideration, what, what do we do with this new technology? How can we develop something that is not only news and sports, but actually can, can interact with, with, with a different type of audience? And uh, the idea of a song contest came up, and, and next year it was hosted in Lugano, Switzerland. The first Eurovision contest was held in Lugano. The participants were the representatives of seven countries. Since then, the contest has become an annual and traditional event. Each of the representatives of the seven participating countries of the first Eurovision had to sing two songs. It remains the only time when each country has had to present more than one song. The compulsory condition was a live performance with a live orchestra. At that time, the contest was won by the host country of Switzerland. Of course you're nervous. And when I had to repeat and sing the song once more, I forgot the lyrics because of that. <laughs> I was so excited. In parallel with the development of the contest, its rules changed and evolved as well. So it was decided that each participant shall perform only one song and its length should not exceed three minutes. This year, one of the songs presented at the Eurovision Song Contest was Nel Blu di Pinto di Blu, performed by the representative of Italy, Domenico Madungo, which is now known all over the world as Volare. Interestingly though, the song could only secure third place. In the 1960s, the scale and glamour really came into the contest. The event expanded in its geography, as well as attracting new star participants. This year, the audience was presented with a new format for performing songs. Shooting took place in the concert studio, while the viewers were in another room. In addition, each participant had their own original stage set. The first colour television broadcast. However, this time it was a luxury that not everyone could enjoy. The first and last time that four singers won together. Representatives from France, Netherlands, Spain and the UK all went on to share victory. After the voting scandal that occurred during the Eurovision 69, the number of participants dropped dramatically in 1970. But the contest continued to evolve in terms of rules and technical support. Broadcast geography expanded to the Soviet Union, South America, and Asia. Having tossed a coin, participants from the Netherlands and France determined that the contest in 1970 would take place in Amsterdam. England and Spain decided not to take part in the draw. Under the new rules, in case several participants won the first place, according to their points, they would have to perform again so that the jury could decide on a single winner. It was the first time that a display panel appeared during the vote. That year, the participants could choose between using a live orchestra or a phonogram as an accompaniment. The representative of the UK, Cliff Richards, was the first who dared to sing without live music. If backing vocals were used, all the instruments had to be presented on the stage. As ABBA became the winner the previous year, the Eurovision Song Contest for 1975 was held in Stockholm. For the first time, a new voting system was used. The jury award a separate set of points from 1 to 12 for 10 songs. At the same time, 12, 10 and 8 points are given by each panel of jury to the three best songs and the rest are ranked lower receiving from seven to one point respectively. Changing times, changing trends. More and more often, the first prize goes to pop and rock singers. For the first time in its history, 
The contest takes place in Norway. The winner is a representative of Belgium, Sandra Kim, with the song J'aime la vie. It turned out that she was only 13 years old, although she had told the producers that she was 15. Despite this, the young girl's victory was not cancelled and Sandra Kim looks set to be the youngest participant of the contest. The voting score is now shown on electronic display. The representative of Switzerland, Celine Dion, became the winner with the song Ne Parte Pas Sommois. However, this song did not go on to get further popularity. When Celine Dion came was because I couldn't, I wasn't free because I had a contract in America. Otherwise it would have been me once more. But I think she was great and she has deserved it. She's a lovely woman. In this decade, the contest came up with new standards that have been persevered to the present day. The main focus is on modern technology. As an experiment, and for the very first time, TV viewers participated in the voting by using phones. The process took place in the UK, Sweden, Austria, Switzerland and Germany. A year later, this principle became a standard in almost all member countries. Until this moment, all the participants were required to perform songs in the language of the country that they represented. As of 1999, this rigid rule ceased to exist. Since this contest, the representatives of France, Germany, Spain and the UK will now always perform. For the first time in the history of the contest, all performances were without a live orchestra. A phonogram was used instead. By removing the orchestra, it also allowed the song contest to grow and become more contemporary in its style and its, in, in the way of expression. In this period, there was an active expansion of the European Union. It became obvious to everybody as new participants appeared in the Eurovision Song Contest. At the 2002 edition of Eurovision, held in Estonia, all participants were offered one common theme, modern fairy tales. And this is the good thing about Eurovision Song Contest, because it travels, it travels to every corner of Europe. And every year uh, it, it brings some flavour from, from that uh, specific region. New changes in the rules. From now on, before the final, all participants will pass two more semi-finals. Russia organised the most large-scale Eurovision Song Contest in terms of technology in its history. The representative of Norway, Alexander Ryback, became the winner with his song, Fairy Tale. I was behind the stage in Moscow when Alexander Ryback won for Norway in 2009. And I was probably the last person who, who understood that he was going to win. On to a period of bright, loud and flamboyant performances. Social networks played a special role in the development of the project and Italy returned to the contest after 13 years. Loreen from Sweden won the first place with the song Euphoria. It received 12 points from 17 countries. This song went on to become a mega hit in many European countries with 2.2 million albums sold. Another striking performance that captured the hearts of millions was that by Buranovskia Babushki from Russia. The highlight of this season of Eurovision was definitely the performance by Conchita Verst from Austria. I think um, it's a good song too, good, pr good uh, presentation. And Conchita, she is fabulous. She's sim sim simply, simply fantastic. But when it comes to Conchita and her performance, that was a magic moment. You saw both from the juries and from the, from the public votes that uh, Conchita made a huge impact all over Europe, west, south, east, north, uh, all over actually. This year's contest comes to Stockholm for the third time in its history. The spirit of Eurovision is, uh, is very positive. I think it's a great venue for different countries and different people to come together and really unite in the, uh, in the joy of creating music. I just have been to Israel, to Tel Aviv, and I can tell you that uh, they love this whole stuff. And uh, I, I felt it, I really felt the vibe. I think this year the spirit of the Eurovision Song Contest, more than when I was there in 2002, is one of unity and one that really respects the slogan which has come together. Since 1975, they have decided to use an improved voting system. The scoreboard opposite the name of each participant will display not one, but two separate sets of points, one from the professional jury and the other one from viewers. The rating system of 12, 10, 8 and that of 7 to 1 points shall remain in place. Eurovision is more like festive celebration of 
uh, colorful, happy people who come together every year to listen to good music. This year's theme is Come Together. Eurovision stands for, I mean, it's diversity, it's, it's, uh, it's, it unites Europe like no other, other cultural event does. It's a few sports moments that can com compare uh, itself to Eurovision Song Contest, actually. Jugoscopy TV has taken you through the Eurovision Song Contest story so far, but new chapters are being written every year. And soon, Stockholm will play host and we'll have to congratulate the new winner of 2016.